Holla at your boy. Yes, Another indeed. Motherfucking Saturday morning conversation. Yes. Some man, DJ Caveman in the building. DJ Iron Monkey. Yeah, that loud ass, like, blowing sound that you might hear behind me is the motherfucking heat because it snowed out here. Yeah, it was a little dusting, not not too bad. It's always cold as shit in the Wood Green Studios anyway. Yeah. Motherfuckers is always in here with their hoodies. Yeah, because we cold as ice, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, got that cold blood. Cold blooded. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that being the case. That being the case. That time has arrived. The time has arrived. Mount Rushmore of R&B the Selection Mount, Saturday. The Mount Rushmore of R&B Selection Saturday. Yes, we had to say that shit twice. Uh, we've been working on this bracket. We reached out to some, some, uh, some, some minds. Some in-house minds. Some in-house yeah. minds that we trusted. Mm -hmm. Whose opinions we respected. Yeah. Uh, Some that were kind of forced upon. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I'm laughing as, you know, we have a special guest in the studio today. We got some special guests in the studio. We got our not-so-silent producer over here. Yes, hello, hello. Good morning. And then we got my special lady over here, Andrea. Hey. Just a hey. Oh, no, hey, young world. No. No, no mini Rippleton lyrics. Ripperton. <laughs> so uh This whole show is dedicated to just putting this bracket together. Yes. And this is how it's gonna work. Mm-hmm. We're gonna give you the brackets. Uh there's a seventies bracket, it's an eighties bracket, it's a nineties bracket, it's a two thousands bracket, which yes. is roughly two thousand two thousand ten. Yes. After we do the brackets, we're going to put the matchups out on the Facebook page mm-hmm. for motherfuckers to go ahead and vote. The votes last week. Yep. At the end, we'll tell you who the winners are and move to the next level of the bracket until we have our four uh, champions from each decade yes. to make up the Mount Rushmore of R&B. Yes. Now... One thing that, doing my research about this whole Mount Rushmore R&B, realized that back in 2014, there was a list that was compiled. And based on that list, I wasn't really feeling that list, but our whole list was actually spawned upon, I found the old Vibe magazine um, cover. No, it wasn't even a cover. It was a insert when they had the uh, Best Rappers Alive. And it was to... And, and, Conjunction with March Madness, so you had like Biggie versus somebody else and X, Y, and Z from that time when that magazine came out, and that was around the time when Jacquees was talking that foolishness about how he was the king of R&B. Like, yo, dude, are yeah, you the king of R&B? <laughs> and all your songs are basically covers of other people's songs. Number one, number two, like, who's you? Like, how you the king? He's too new to be the king. Yeah, for real. And the kid is talented. I'll give him credit. He's he's rather he's, he's kind of talented. He can sing better than me. Well, uh-huh. I don't know if he can sing better than me. You know, my shower concert and my on the way to the gym concerts in the morning. Yeah, I fucking sold out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, every now and when you're in the shower, you always get a standing ovation. That's it. All right. <laughs> So that being the case, I get showered with love. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that, that being the case, <laughs> so what we did was is um, we we did for March Madness. We came up with you know our top sixteen for each decade. So what we did was is the seventies, which we'll start with now. And what we looked at wasn't just sales or the music; it was also their voice and. We didn't really talk about how we were waiting at all. It was more about just the feel of the person. Now, it leaves a lot of debate open of who you prefer, who had more hits, um, who... Who wrote better songs. Who, who wrote better, better songs, voice. who was better producers, you know, who stood the test of time as, as things went on. So... Yeah, yeah, let's hit them with all the number ones first. All right, so, so the so. number ones, number ones. So, for the 70s... Ah, the seventies is a tough bracket. So the person that we picked for our number one in the seventies, uh, we had Aretha Franklin Aretha as our Franklin. number one. Number one in the seventies, Aretha Franklin. Yep. Well deserved. Yes. 
I don't think there's really any debate on no the, on that. Well, based on who's number two, we, no, but Aretha because she passed, she 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 gets that on. She gets the extra edge. No, nah, well, no, nah, I don't want to say that. But either way, so moving on to the '80s. So our number one seed in the '80s, which is also another killer bracket, we had Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, All right? Number one in the '80s. Uh, the '80s was tough though. The '80s, yeah. the '80s number one. That was uh. Yo, even when you got down to like the 15 and 16 seed, there was a couple of people that got, uh, end up getting left off the list. The because... 80s bracket is the bracket of death, man. You think so? I think so. I think the 80s bracket is the bracket of death. Yeah, yeah. The 70s like, is a... nobody. Nobody's gonna be happy about the pe- person they want to win not winning. Yeah. But you can't be mad at who comes out of the 80s bracket because it's just all titans. Oh yeah, for real, for real. All titans, all titans. 90s bracket. All right, the 90s bracket. This bracket to me is somewhat of the softer and weaker bracket, but number one in the '90s we have Babyface. Babyface. All right, so you know for the cool and new, not just as a singer but also a producer that gave him the edge over other people in the '90s. So and a writer, and a writer, and a writer. Okay, all right. So yeah, that's why he yeah, that's why he got number one in the '90s. Don't be shy. If you're going to get on the mic, get on the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, no, I'm no, just no. trying to respect your thing. But... Oh, no, no, no. We'll, right. we'll, we'll, no. we'll open the floor up in we'll, a second. We'll open the floor up in a second. All right. So now for the 2000s. 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 2000s, it was weird because it's both strong and weird. It has a lot of weird characters in this bracket for me. But um, number one in the 2000s is Beyonce. They once. So we have, once. <laughs> <laughs> we have her I we have her as the number one. So when you look at it, all our number ones except for babyface are females. So and that was one of the things I was looking at too when I was making my list. I, I had like two separate lists. I had the male list and I had the females. And then I had to merge the two where a lot of males end up getting shipped uh shifted off because of the females were strong. Yeah. So that being the case, for, so recap for number one C for the seventies, we got Aretha Franklin. Boom. Number one for the eighties, we have Whitney Houston. Boom. For the two thousand, uh, actually for the nineties, number one we got Babyface. Boom. And then for the two thousands, number one we got Beyonce. Burr, 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 burr. Yes, yes, yes. Ring the alarm. So, um, <laughs> wheel up. Yeah. So that being the case, now what we'll do? Should I go through every rankings in the the seventies? Yo, let's, yeah, let's go through the seventies, just like Selection Sunday. You know what I'm saying for the for the NCAA, we're gonna go through the through the matchups. All right. Uh, in the seventies uh, division. All right. So at number one, we have Aretha Franklin in the seventies. So number sixteen, see going up against her, we have. Dion Warwick. Dion Warwick. All right. Do we have any commentary from the? Uh... No, no commentary. No. You know, I feel right. like that's a should be an easy victory. All right. Yes. Yeah, for no. Aretha, you know what I'm saying, Dion. So now the coveted number two spot in the '70s, we have Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Going up against number fifteen, Minnie Ripperton. Minnie Ripperton. So this one, this one's a tough matchup because once I started writing it down, I was like, oh damn. She kind of got a raw deal on that one. <laughs> She's Considering like, he produced her album. Yeah. But so the, it's like the Ninja she, Turtle versus Master Splinter. Basically. like Yeah, but she, but she made the list as a number 15 seed. So that being the case. She's in there from North Mississippi, Appalachian, Mountain State University Community College. Yeah. A&M. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for many, there wouldn't be a Mariah. Okay. Okay. All right. That's why she's on the list. All right. Yeah. She made the list. She's strong. She's a strong competitor. You see, the bracket is very strong. Yeah, the seventies and the eighties. Seventies bracket is very like, strong. I, I think a... the seventies is a is a tough bracket in itself because Stevie Wonder's a number two. Um, number three seed we have Marvin Gaye versus the number fourteen seed Bobby Womack. Marvin Gaye versus Bobby Womack. That, 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 yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough matchup right there. I think that's going to be one of the closer. One of the closer votes in the seventies. In the seventies, yeah. Um, gonna, uh, actually, nah. I, 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 I'll tell you my my favorite one at, towards the end though. 
All right, so number number four seed in the seventies, we have James Brown versus the number thirteen seed, Bill Withers. That one, that one, no no comments. Any comments? You're not a Bill Withers fan. I like Bill Withers a lot. Yeah, you know, I really like James Brown too. You know, but if I'm a if I'm a call an upset, I think that's going to be the upset. Withers over Brown. Withers over Brown. Yeah, because Brown is more funk, and he be... initially he James Brown didn't initially make my list, but when we started talking about it. We included a bunch of other people, and that will show up more in the eighties when, when, when we start to talk about it. Because again, James Brown was more funk for me. Yeah, but he had a dope voice, though. Yeah, and then he did have a lot of R and B songs. A lot of R and B tracks. So you know, I think it's I think it's worthy of him to be on the list where he's at. But I feel like if there's going to be an upset, that's going to be that's going to be the upset because Bill Withers has some hits too. Yeah, yeah. You know that hit like his hits kind of hit home, like uh, grime out hands and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, lean on so, me. And he sang on Just the Two of Us. Just the Two of Us. Grover Washington song. Wait, is that a remix of the Will Smith song? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I know. I, I, yeah, come on. Man, I need, come a, on, come I need on. a cricket noise. For yeah. That <laughs> one. Put the... All right, so the number five seed in the 70s, we have Smokey Robinson. Smokey Robinson. Versus number 12, Teddy Pendergrass. Versus number 12. Oof. That, that's a tough that's... one. Right, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call upset alert on that one too. You think so? Yeah, right. I love Teddy Pendergrass. I like Smokey too. Smokey, but, Smokey's nice, even you know. though he's looking creepier and creepier as he gets older. He just looks like a reptilian man. That's all, <laughs> all that Botox, man. I don't know what it is, but he just—I don't know—he just looks spooky to me. All right, so number six in the '70s, we have Al Green, uh, and this is the matchup I like: Al Green versus number eleven, Donny Hathaway. This is a this is That's a, a strong matchup. This is a strong matchup in itself. Um, there's a lot of debate that could go back and forth because the one thing that kind of holds back Donny Hathaway is that his career wasn't as long, so that his longevity plays against him in the, in that case. But that's a that's a solid matchup at the six eleven seed. Um, the next matchup we have as the seven, we have Diana Ross versus number ten Curtis Mayfield. Now I know. Andrea wasn't really much of a Curtis Mayfield fan because of his voice. Slow down. I'm a fan, but I just felt like there were other people that had a better have, voice who could have been on this list over him. Now but again, who would, you, who would you put on over him? Wait, 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 wait. We'll hold off on the cut list towards right. the end. Because, See if there's any snubs. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't go through everybody, right? So the snub list, we'll go over the the somewhat right. snub list. But you, again, the criteria is sales, voice, music. And not when we say music and the sound, it's also the musical impact and the influence. So that that's the thing there. But again, that's uh seven seed Diana Ross versus ten seed Curtis Mayfield. Um at the eight nine, this one is actually pretty uh, this one is a this wasn't a pick'em one. Number eight Gladys Knight versus number nine Ron Isley. You know, Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs. Yes, when he was um, with the Isley Brothers and Between the Sheets and all of that. Between the Sheets was the 80s. 80s? Well, either way, we're still taking in the his whole collection of work. Um, And I think that is everybody. So again, to run down the rankings, number one, Aretha Franklin for the 70s. Number two, Stevie Wonder. Number three, Marvin Gaye. Number four, James Brown. Number five, Smokey Robinson. Number six, Al Green. Seven, Diana Ross. Eight, Gladys Knight. Nine, Ron Isley. Ten, Curtis Mayfield. Eleven, Donnie Hathaway. Uh, number twelve, we have Teddy Pendergrass. Thirteen, Bill Withers. Fourteen, Bobby Walmack, 15, Minnie, and I'll just keep it at that because I don't feel like getting corrected again. And then number 16, we have Dionne Ward. So again, we're going to post all these on our Facebook page so that way y'all could make your debates, make your votes, and see how things progress from there. All right. So the snub list. Who got snubbed? Natalie Cole. Natalie Cole got snubbed. Okay. So who would you have dropped? Curtis Mayfield. Not Minnie Ripperton? No. <laughs> why, why, why Curtis Mayfield? 
so I think he's more of a musician mm -hmm. than singer. Like his his voice, it wasn't bad, but for me, many the octaves. Like okay. nobody can hit those octaves like still. Well, and see, and this is why I had the the criteria and how it was weighted was left out of it because for you her voice was there but when it comes to sales and her musical impact her musical impact compared to Curtis Mayfield wasn't there her like, life was cut short though yeah and and that that's the thing that kind of holds back Donny Hathaway on this list as well is because his his longevity isn't really there like his what you could go based on isn't long enough now some other people that got cut was like Otis Redding Sam but he Cook. was 60s. They were 60s. Yeah, Sam Cook. Again, he was more 60s. That was going to be my argument. Sam Cook, Etta James. Now, they in themselves, if we would have went from the 60s, they would have most definitely made the list. Mm -hmm. But they were part of the whole snub list because they're not really 70s. And we didn't want to go that far, far back in, in, into the archives of things and start pulling out 45s. <laughs> No, because even Isley's go back to the 60s too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, some people, they just transcend so many different eras where it, it's tough. And it, it'll, it'll show up. And... So many, like, on the Perfect Angel album, like, Stevie Wonder produced it as El Toro Negro because he didn't want to take any shine from her. Mm-hmm. So that just shows how amazing her voice is. That he wanted to work with it? He wanted to work with her. And, and no, then didn't and want to shine. Why, like he didn't want it to be Stevie Wonder producing. And that's why she made the list and not get cut like some other people. I just want to let y'all know but you why see, she made the list. It wasn't just because I no, love her. But no, but she was she It was, was just, mostly because you lobbied for her. Yeah, no, yeah, you did lobby hard for her. The Roots... Tribe Called Quest, uh, come on, uh, Mafia, she like made... all of the samples. Uh, right. So she's influenced them. All right. Okay, all right. wait, wait, wait. Back hold to on. the snubs. Wait, wait, hold on. She didn't just make the list. She made it as a 15. So she wasn't like the last person in. She, you know, the second to last, but still. She's not the last person in. <laughs> but yeah, who else you had on your snub list for the 70s? Evelyn Champagne King. Disco. Yeah, Disco. I'm in love. You think that's disco? I think that she's like a she's disco. You see, no, there was a lot. I don't. Of... I don't think of any, I don't think of her as like a like she has a strong vocal voice, but I don't sit back and like she's never she's never making my R and B slow jams tapes. Yeah, but see, even Alicia Myers missed the list too, and she had a couple of she had a couple of songs, but she could be considered more eighties than anything, which is the transition point here. Yeah. All right, so now for the 80s. Oh, wait. Oh, you got more? She has more snubs. She has a whole list of snubs over David there. Ruffin. Yeah, David Ruffin did get snubbed. Um, he was a tough one. The um, Eddie Levert is another one that could have got made the list too. But again, you know, it, it a lot of room for debate. And Dennis Edwards, David Dennis. Ruffin's replacement. Okay. I wish it would rain. Come on. That's one song. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Two songs. Uh, we got jokes. Come on, quotations. No. Don't do that. No, but I'm saying, like, when you really look at the volume and body of work, even though some of the work might have come from the 80s and the person was moved to the, the 70s, you have to bring in their whole body of work. So, like, Curtis Mayfield, Superfly? His whole body of work, again, when you look at his cultural impact, right? And not just that, the sales. Now, how many people were doing musical scores out because Isaac Hayes didn't make the list? But how many people were doing musical scores? Like, there was, um, who's the other guy that did uh, Brothers Gonna Work It Out? Willie Hutch. He was doing, yeah. he was doing soundtracks too. So there was no, wasn't a lot of people doing soundtracks, but Curtis Mayfield was the man to actually open up that avenue, really, when you look at it. So he he gets the edge. Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones was doing stuff too, but he wasn't a singer, and he didn't make the list either. Okay. So yeah, there, there's a lot of valuable and s substance to the su uh, the snub list too, you know. But again, it's up for debate. Uh, if you know time goes on and they come out with new music, and you know maybe we'll update the list next year. But as of right now, this is what it is. So what? people need to vote. Yes. Yes, vote. Um, 
You could be on the felon know, list too. You know, <laughs> Andrea is going to be on voting like a thousand times for Minnie Riperton. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. know if Minnie Riperton get like five hundred votes on a burner account. Uh, <laughs> come on, come on. There Durant. are a lot of people out there who like her, and if you don't know who she is, you have a week. Right? Yeah, to go listen to her. And you vote her and over Stevie vote Wonder. For her. And vote her over Stevie Wonder. Yeah, vote over Stevie Wonder. Go ahead, do it. Do it, I dare you. Yeah, I, I dare you to do she it. She was up against Stevie. But I, either way, go listen you. to her and I, understand why and she's on this bracket if you don't know who I she is. I triple dog dare you to vote her over Stevie Wonder. Mm-hmm. Shit ain't fucking happening. Nah, come on now. Come on. Let's just she made real. the list as a 15. I'm not saying that she's going to win, but I'm saying go listen to her and understand why yes. my yes. fight is so passionate for her. Okay, so. On to the 80s. All right, so the 80s. as The we bracket said, of death. Yes. Now, we had Whitney Houston at number one. So she's going up against number 16, and the 16 was actually kind of tough because we had a couple of people, and I actually made the case for this person. So this was my Minnie Ripperton. <laughs> Ripper Tin. <laughs> Alright, so either way, so Whitney Houston against number 16, Charlie Wilson. We have number two. The number two seed is Michael Jackson. Now, Michael <laughs> ja- Michael didn't initially make my list because I had him at the King of Pop, but at, as we discussed earlier, we added him to the list. Yeah, so, you could be the MVP and the rookie of the year. Yeah, and offensive player. And you player. can win the Golden Gloves. And you can, I mean, you can win multiple awards. Yeah, that, and that's true. You know, you can hold more belt. But like, Mike's under scandal right now, though, so. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple know. of people, because David Ruffin was under scandal, but again, and this, and he didn't make the list, but Michael's under scandal, and he made the list like some other people. sold like 7 billion records. Dude went diamond, so it's hard to vote against, going against diamond, especially when you have sales, like, like if sales isn't everything, that's cool, right? Especially when you don't sell anything. But when you sell, it's the Diamond equalizer, level? though. No, but when you yeah, it's definitely the equalizer. Like, who's better? Yeah, but like, see, in a debate like Robert Ory versus Patrick Hewen, you can't say Robert Ory's better than Patrick Hewen because he has more rings. Well, no, but if they had the same stats, no, but they don't. But they don't. You see, but so, if they did, if like if you got two dope singers. Mm-hmm. And everything's like well equal, equal, or who, equalish. Who has more Grammys? Or comparable? Who got more Grammys? Who got more Grammys? Who got more record sales? You know, yeah. Who had better concert numbers? If you want to go that deep, you so, know. So again, when like, you got to go places and you're fucking, you need to hire the the military to follow you around, make sure people don't fuck with you. Mm. Like I don't see how you can get left off a list. Yeah, but then, but then you'll have somebody like what, what, what's his name, Mambo Number no. Nine. Versus somebody like somebody that has a good body of music. Oh, right, right, right. He has a lot of record sales. So, yeah. you, but his talent isn't really there. So it, it's a give and take. But again, Michael May is a number two, and he's going against number fifteen seed Stephanie Mills, who he used to date. Oh shit! It's like okay, so he likes a uh, grown woman puss too, huh? So number uh, Michael versus Stephanie Mills. Uh, number three. Number three, we have Prince. <laughs> Wait, that's Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, you can't mix <laughs> Prince and Michael Jackson. <laughs> Prince will come back from the grave for you, man. So, Prince. Yo, actually, looking at this, three, four, and five. No, actually, no. Well, I'll, I'll get to that down the line. But either way, Prince had a number three. He goes against number fourteen, Tina Turner. All right. That that is what it is. <laughs> we have number four seed Patty Labelle and a Patty Pies versus number thirteen Bill Withers. All right, no comments on that one. Number five seed we have Luther Vandross versus number twelve seed James Ingram. That's a good matchup, I think. Yeah, that is actually that's a good matchup. Yeah, and just even going through the music uh, catalog, it would be a nice little adventure of music, even though. I have an idea who might win that one. That, but no, that one could. That be was going to be a close one. That was yeah, going to yeah, be a close that, one. That one could be an upset. Um, the number six seed versus uh, the eleven seed. This one should actually be interesting. Number six is Anita Baker versus number eleven, Jeffrey Osborne. Legendary Osborne fam. Uh, okay, yeah, Jeffrey. That's Osborne. That's that home team over there. She's home team. Yes, yeah, home team Osborne. 
she's uh I'm not gonna call her bias, but you know. Yeah. Uh, nepotism. No, because even if we weren't related, I said he's one of my favorite R and B singers. He's just got that voice. He does. Did you know you were related to him before you knew about his music? Yeah. Favoritism. Yeah. yeah you were born into it. It's, it's like, okay it's, though. It's like me being yeah. born a, a New York Giant fan. No, it's not. Yeah, I was born into it. Go ahead. All right. So number seven seed, we have Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. This is actually a nice matchup. Versus number ten, Barry White. Oh shit. So this that's, one, that's a good matchup. I'm I'm looking forward to see who the winner of that matchup is. Yeah. I'm not even getting those. Just the bracket of death. Yeah. And then the last matchup we have the number eight seed. Ooh, this one is a tight one. This one is a serious pick em. Number eight seed, Sade, versus the number nine seed, Rick James. Rick James, bitch. Rick James, bitch. Yes. Give it to me, babe. Me Even me. though he's funk, he made the list, too. Oh, I'm not doubting that. I was just, no Philip Bailey on that one? Philip Bailey, Bailey is on the snub list. On the snub list. And again, it was either Philip Bailey or Charlie Wilson. I was making my Charlie Wilson pitch. No Maurice White. Maurice White, no Alexander O'Neill, no DeBarge, no who else didn't make the list? Tina Marie, no Tina, Tina Marie. Marie, Denise Williams, no Denise Williams, Melissa Morgan. Yeah, no. she had like two hits. Alicia, but she had. Well, I was gonna say no, like Alicia Myers. <laughs> Alicia Myers didn't I, make the Andrea's list. Andrea is the queen of bringing up R and B cats that got one hit. Peebo Bryson. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Peebo biggest Bryson. snub of them all. Peebo Bryson. Peebo Bryson. That's the big snub. Yep. Uh, she made a case for Peebo last week, but I was like, Peebo got like four songs and they're all Disney tracks. No, come on, man. Yeah, no, but yeah, no, you did make your case, but Peebo Bryson wasn't uh, on enough people's list for us to put Because him people here. forgot about him. The, the 80s, so that he was need- him. We talked about whenever there was a love scene in a soap opera, they played <laughs> Peebo. Tonight I celebrate my love. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm again. so into you. He only got like, show and tell. He got like 13 songs and tell. eight of them are features. <laughs> like it's not enough. How many songs does Anita Baker have? No shade because I Whoa. like her too. But I'm just asking. Yo, first of all, the voices are not even comparable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start there. Way better voice. Oh yeah. Way better, in See, my opinion. In your opinion. My opinion. You know, and she had more hits, and none of them were Disney tracks. You don't get because no weight. her voice wasn't big enough to be on a Disney track. She, she didn't have to be on no Disney mm-hmm. tracks. True. I'm thinking she did though, because what happened? She didn't have to be. Ain't nobody playing people bracing on Sunday morning while they cleaning their house except Actually, you. Actually, they are, Just and they you. were. People, Just you. please go to the page. Speak oh, no, your mind. James I'm like yelling at the mic. She's yelling at the mic because she, she's she trying to make she, her case. For for motherfucking people, Bryson. I like Anita Baker, but <laughs> I Peebo gonna talk, Bryson. I gonna talk on, ill man, of Anita was, Baker. The beginning of his songs, like, yeah, people was nice. He just wasn't nice enough to make the list. I'm sorry. I'm not. You don't need to be on the list. Ain't no Disney singers on the '80s list. It's the bracket of death. Yo, because if anything, I w- I would make more of a case for Alexander O'Neill. See, even even Morris Day didn't make the list. But Morris Day didn't really have like he had Jigglos Need a Love outside of Bird and Jungle Love. Cool. Jungle Love. Cool, cool. But that was more of a funky song. So when you look at it, it's some people didn't make the list and it's not like we don't Saying appreciate Rockwell's not music. on the list either. We're gonna put Rockwell on the list. He did have record sales. Don't do that. Rockwell, Peebo Bryson. <laughs> Nah, yeah, Rockwell wasn't really that good. <laughs> Yo, the hate is thick in the air. No, it isn't. It's not really that thick. No, but see, the snub list, again, it's a good debate and a good conversation to have for the 80s. So we'll post, like, you can post up your snub list if you want, you know, and have them as your write-ins, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> no? No, I'm definitely. I know you would. <laughs> She's lobbying hard body for Peebo Bryson. Uh-huh. Come on, just woof him. And I, I'm mad I keep saying just once. Isn't that James Ingram? That is. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's that's when you lose me. When I keep thinking that you did a song and it was somebody else. Yeah. 
You know, nobody can like they think their songs like I always thought he was. He did the Five O song, right? No, he didn't do the Five O song. It was Aladdin. Oh, Arabian Nights. <laughs> <laughs> He did that song? He did the Beauty and the Beast track. Beauty though, and the right? Beast with Celine Dion. A Whole New World with Regina Bell. Regina Bell got snubbed. Oh, yeah. A Whole New World wasn't the Fiber song? American no, Tale? Who American, American Tale was somewhere out there. <laughs> that wasn't him? That might have been him. That it was people? him with James Ingram. See? Again. <laughs> See? <laughs> Again. Again. You, you made, you made the point. You just proved the point. Why he did not make the list. All right. So... Now that we move on to the nine, oh yeah, somewhere out there is James Ingram. Somewhere out there is James Ingram. Oh, so he made the list, though, right? With his animation cartoon. Because we know other again. James Ingram is James uh, Ingram. See, just once I thought it was people Bryson, but it was James Ingram. You see, again, when you think rest that, in peace, James Ingram, amazing voice. I'm not doubting that, but people. <laughs> but see, even Howard Hewitt didn't make the list. He was on my list, but he didn't make it. And you know what? Life goes on. I'm not gonna like fight over how it hewed. Yeah, because if he would have made skin. it, then Jody Watley should have made it. Uh, come on, no. Jody Watley's not Team Light Skin. <laughs> She's or really the not. Bodge, or the Bodge. Come on, come on. He has a voice. He has a voice, but you know he also. I, li- make I like Chico the Bodge, though. Do you? I thought he was pretty dope. He had a couple songs in the '90s, like two or three. Well, yeah, for the '90s, he, the 90s. he didn't, he didn't he, make it. Yeah, he, he and he used to date Janet. Well, they were married, right? That was James. James? Chico's the younger brother. Yeah, she, song. He, he was he was fucking with Janet. Chico. Chico the bar. No, James was. She was married to James. Go ahead, Google it. All right. And then so, he went to jail, and he came. No, out. James the Bodge was married to Janet. <laughs> wait, 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 this, some... wait. This is nineties talk. All right. So wait, wait. Let, let me let me start on my nineties list. Let's oh yeah, do it. do it. On the nineties. All right. So the bracket for the nineties. We had Babyface at number one, going up. Against the infamous number sixteen, R. Kelly. <laughs> Robert. Yeah, he made the list. Y'all trying to kill me, man. Yeah, after thirty years of being under suspicion, now y'all want to come for me. So yeah, Babyface versus R. Kelly. This is classic night versus day, or <laughs> day versus night. This is what it is. <laughs> Vote, because this one, this one might actually be an upset. Which one? R. Kelly versus Babyface. Possibly. Number one versus number 16. Based on music. Now, R. Kelly's produced some stuff too. Now, granted, you might not want to talk about his personal life or thinking that his music subsidizes his personal life. But a lot of his music was written about his personal life. Yeah, that too. That's like even him. even you are not alone. That he wrote for Michael. That was right, about so wait, a girl so wait, having an abortion. Like, so, come on. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. So wait. So yeah, wait. It was saying beautifully, but no. Does any of Teddy Pendergrass's songs change for you, knowing that he could have been quote unquote possibly gay? Not at all, because that has that's when no he wait, no, 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 no. R. Kelly's doing. No, no, no. Wait, no, no, no. I'm not saying that they're on the same plane. My question is. In a vacuum, does Teddy Pendergrass music change if he's saying girl and he's actually singing to a dude? No, but if R. Kelly's singing girl and he's really singing to a girl. No, I'm not asking about R. Kelly. And that's the that's the problem with your answer, just... is that you want to insert R. Kelly into your answer. In a in a vacuum. Right? Would somebody's music change for you if you knew that they would they were gay or they had different type of lifestyle if it's a different type of lifestyle that includes pedophilia yes again yeah, you're bringing you're, you're bringing in R. Kelly and that's why I said in the vacuum alright so moving on from number one versus number 16 we have number two Mariah Carey versus number 15 Aaliyah so this one is gonna be an interesting it's gonna matchup. be an interesting matchup I'm, I'm interested to see how that one pans out and you see Aaliyah the thing that kind of goes against her is the longevity thing as well you know, which happens with a couple of people in the past. And Mariah Carey, she is who she is. You know, now you have to kind of isolate the whack moments and actually, you know, look at some of the the actual musical content. She's definitely a singer who's lost her voice over the years, too. Yeah, she's, she's not as strong. She's had some real hard bumps in the road. 
to say the least. <laughs> and bumps not meaning cocaine, so I'm gonna leave that out of it. Uh, I thought you were talking about Nick Cannon, anyway. Yeah, I kind of was, but <laughs> so um, yeah, that's number two versus fifteen. Um, now I have number three, Rafael Sadiq versus number fourteen, Bobby Brown. This that should be an easy victory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Bobby, you put up a fight because Andre Mika votes from a burner accounts. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's her prerogative. <laughs> but all right, so number four, we have Johnny Gill versus number thirteen, Janet Jackson, Miss Janet, if you're nasty. So. That that one I can see that one as an upset. I, I can see Janet beating Johnny. But Johnny has the voice. But no, he doesn't got, have the sales. We got a new edition making the strong Yeah, new edition. Strong What's showing. In the nineties. In the nineties. Hmm. Imagine that. And well we'll 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 get to the snub list later on. Alright, so from that we have the five seed Maxwell versus the number twelve seed Joe. That's the upset right there for me. That's my 12-5 upset. You think so? I think so. You're going Joe over Maxwell? Close. It's Damn. close. It's real close for me. Damn, but. that's a that's a hard one. I, I don't know. I I see that as Maxwell all the way, but we got to see how the voters vote. All right, so, so we have a number six. This one, I don't know about this one. This one's just a wet matchup. Number six, D'Angelo versus number 11, Brandy. It's just a weird one. I don't know. I mean, I see D'Angelo. D'Angelo's is. pretty talented, but you know, I I don't fucks with him after that naked ass video. Uh, you don't want to be down with that? No. Oh boy. Yeah, Brandy. Come on, that was I an easy it. joke. I that was a volleyball it. setup. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So you jumped off ship with the with the nakedness. Yeah, fuck that dude, yo. I don't want to, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so from that, we have the 7th seed versus the 10. Uh, 7, we have Tony Braxton versus the number 10, Monica. This actually That's pretty, a good matchup. This this one is actually a pretty interesting one. Just once you start going through the music, it's all about what you prefer because Monica seemed to have more street music and Tony Braxton, part of the whole babyface movement, they had more of a fluffier, pleasant, like adult contemporary type R&B. You know, yeah. but yeah. they're both strong voices, though. Yeah, they are both strong voices, and uh, somebody's gonna hit the freeway. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! So uh, <laughs> <laughs> the last matchup we got here in the '90s, we got number eight, Gerald Levert. Gerald Levert versus number nine, Mary J. Blige. This one was a weird one too. Like the '90s got a lot of weird matchups. So Mary J. Blige, the worst dancer in R&B. Yes. Yes, indeed. No, she's the best at being the worst. So she got that best going for her. But no, she does put on a, a pretty decent live performance, even though that you're not much of a fan of her. No, he's fan. Uh, no, that's that's a lie. I'm a I'm a fan of Mary J. Oh, okay. I just don't think that she's the greatest singer around. Because no. you saw her in the '90s at the Strand when she was coked out. Uh. No, like even she on, talks about it. Oh, even okay. on her albums, I just don't think that she's that best singer. I mean, I feel the same way about Beyonce. You can't argue the sales, but like, if I think about like their voices, they don't. They're yeah. not like as strong as they probably should be for the amount of fame that they have. Yeah, true. There are better singers yeah, that yeah, don't yeah. have the amount of fame yeah. that Mary J has. I feel you. No, it's just packaged differently. So it, it all depends on like what you prefer. It's I the guess. dance moves. Yeah, uh, uh, she make. The, the auntie dance making you feel like you can you dance know, and she did the All I Need remix with Matt oh yeah what, was it a remix or it was, was it the original song that was a remix uh, was it a remix oh, shit. I thought it was the original you hear so many times and like it's now it's the original no but she did that song with um, Ghostface didn't she uh-huh. All That I Got Is You oh yeah that one too yeah so she she's heavily in the Woo game so she gets that vote for me alright so for the snub list for the 90s who made just snub list for the 90s Coco SWV SWV Coco, yeah, she she has a very strong voice, but just like Casey from what you gonna call it from Jodeci. I got Casey too. I like you can make a you can make an argument for it. 
seeing them both perform live. Like she performed during Fantasia. He performed during Fantasia set. Remember that? Uh, for Essence Fest? Yeah. You tell me. I yeah, I remember that. I don't think people other people remember. I'm that. just trying to I feel like Iron Hall probably could have made the list. Iron Hall. See, that was my that was gonna be my biggest one because I feel like R. Kelly basically stole Aaron Hall's whole steez. And we spoke about this before. Cause like Aaron Hall, he was just an ugly R. Kelly. That that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> R. Kelly was just a pretty Aaron Hall And people just prefer looking at Because Aaron Hall looked like an alien with his funny shaped head And then he went with the ball head mm-hmm. And then his teeth was kind of funky Yo yeah, we Roger. seen him perform uh, yeah. He performed what, what show was that It was like yeah, He DVD. looked like Roger from mm. <laughs> It was like New Edition and, and En Vogue And Guy mm-hmm. And he fucking killed it Yo, like, yo Aaron Hall is a show. beast At, uh, at Foxwoods Yes mm. Yeah he Aaron Hall is a beast smashed it and, but it's just all he's Kelly. not little though. Yeah, he's just, he's just weird looking. He's like five foot four. Like I see Ted Riley, like, but again, like he he was one of the people that was on my list because if we had the playing games, like it would have been Aaron Hall versus R. Kelly for that 16th seat. Yeah, the first time I heard Vibe, I thought that was Aaron Hall. I was like, oh, who's this R. Kelly guy? Yep. Yeah. Stole his whole steez from underneath him, you know, with, with the with the um, no shirt and the vest oh, look, and oh, the, yep. the ball head and the shades, yeah, the cane, the cane. He, yo, he stole everything from him. It's like how Meek Mill took Ace Hood's whole vibe. Yep, 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 yep. No, but no, but yeah, yeah. yeah it's just one was Philly and the other one was Atlanta. So it was uh, Ace, Ace was Hood's from Florida. He's from Miami. Oh, he's from Miami. Yeah, I always thought he was. From Georgia. Hmm. Well, well, so anybody you know, else? Dave Hollister. Dave Hollister was on my list too. He 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 got snubbed. Tevin Campbell. Tevin Campbell was a major one too. Tevin Campbell made the. Uh, he got snubbed. And Shanice. Shanice. I don't think she, that's a snub. Sh- no, Shanice had Shanice had a very great voice. She still does. But she only has like one hit. That's like. That's like me saying Ralph Tresvant was a snub. Actually, I had him on yeah. the list. Yeah, and I, and I and was going to say that too. Christopher Williams. Christopher Williams? Okay. Yeah, he, Christopher Williams, he had the one song from the, from General Hospital, right? Was that Christopher Williams? No, nah, no. Nah. The song they played when everybody got married? No, nah, didn't he have that one song from the Boomerang soundtrack? It was New Jack City. Oh, New Jack City. Okay. Which he was in. He's Ella Fitzgerald's nephew. So so he gets extra votes for being Ella Fitzgerald's nephew? He wasn't the dude that sang the song when everybody got married on General Hospital? I don't watch you. That was Pebo Bryson. Oh, that was Pebo. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. People motherfucking Bryson. Now you're making cases for people, huh? I'm just saying his songs low key, I guess, were like he had mad hits. Uh, all right, so let me see here. So for the 90s, um, wait, I didn't do it for the 80s where I ran down the different seeds again. That's all right. All right, well, whatever. So we just go right to 2000. 2000s. All right, so 2000s. This one is this one is very different. This one has a real diverse. This is the most diverse bracket. And this was the one that has the playing game. This is the bracket with the most white folks, too. The, the only bracket with the white <laughs> folks. <laughs> we tried to get John B in. Yeah, John B yeah, John B missed the cut for the 90s too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody really made a case for John B. Uh, Stevie B now. He he's freestyle. He he wasn't making the list anyways. Um, who else is a white person that could have made the list? Phil Collins could have made the list. No? Uh, McDonald. My, Michael oh, McDonald. Oh, oh, yeah, Mike McDonald. Yeah. We're talking about the peop- white people that could have made the list. <laughs> Tina Marie. Well, she's Portuguese, but still. That's white, isn't it? You don't consider Portuguese white? No, no I, I do. don't know if she's really Portuguese just because she had that song. Portuguese love? <laughs> well, why would you... <laughs> Well, Michael Jackson had Egyptian. Black or white I knew you No, no, no I was going to go with Egyptian queen Oh, damn It was Liberian Li- Liberian girl. queen Liberian girl Well, you know it uh, You thought I was going with Black or white Damn, I was in... You could have put Michael Bolton No Bobby no. Caldwell Bobby Caldwell, maybe Yep But yeah Yeah No, no, no <laughs> Maybe Daryl Hall Daryl Hall? Yeah, man Yeah, he could have made the list Well, these are white Forget people Forget about it Say no go. Well, at least if anything, in two thousands, white people are represented. 
So that being the case, the, the change in R and B. Yes, yes, yes. The change in goes the God, huh? Well, there's only two of them, and they're not really ranked pretty high, so the, it says what it is. But number one, we have Beyonce in 2000 versus the number 16 playing game, the Keisha Cole versus Fantasia. It should be versus Pink, but we're not gonna add that one. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Keisha Cove versus Fantasia for the 16th seed. So that one, that one's a little scrappy fight to go against Beyonce. So we'll see how that one goes. No, that's going to be a thug party either way. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's Rick James, bitch. <laughs> Keisha Cole. But all right, so number two seed in the 2000s, we have Erica Badu versus number 15 seed, Chris Brown. Uh, that's easy enough. Uh, moving on. <laughs> number three seed, we have Jill Scott versus number 14, Rihanna. Uh, yeah, that should be easy. Uh, number four seed, Anthony Hamilton versus number 13. This one is actually interesting. Alicia Keys. Now, some people don't like Alicia Keys because her voice, um, even though she's musically sound, you play two pianos at once. Um, yeah But Anthony Hamilton Just got the voice But Alicia Keys Got the sales too So that's the thing That works on her side Alright So Number 5 seed We have Usher Usher Raymond Versus number 12 Trey Songs. Ooh, this is actually A pretty nice matchup Yeah This is, this is like A changing of the guard The 2000 type. R. Kelly Minus like Fucking the little girls And shit Yeah But they had similar sound well, one, one, one is burning. The other one is yearning. I don't know. Does that make any sense? Stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't really care who's burning and who's yearning in that case either way. But this is where the first white person uh, pulls up at number six. The sixth seed, Justin Timberlake versus the 11th seed. This is actually a nice matchup, voice for voice. Um, Donnell Jones. So, Shorty might have her eyes on this competition. Um, what? No? <laughs> yeah, I'm putting the uh, putting the poll up, one day poll for uh, the playing game Keisha Cole versus Fantasia for the 16th seed <laughs> right now. All right. So go to the Facebook page go and the Facebook page. Saturday morning conversation. Vote, 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 vote. Yes, indeed. Make sure you vote Keisha Cole versus uh, Fantasia. See how that one goes. So where I left off, I had the. I left off with Justin Timberlake as a 6 seed versus the 11 Donnell Jones. Then the 7th seed, we have Christina Aguilera. This is actually a good one. Versus Faith Evans. I like that matchup. Yeah, this, good matchup. this is a good matchup. 7-10. All right. And then for the last one that we have here, for the 2000s, we have number 8. This is actually a good one. Neil versus number 9, John Legend. So that's who we have for two thousands. So who's getting snub? Who got snubbed? Masha Ambrosius. All right. Carl Thomas. Carl Thomas. Okay, I'll give you that one. Okay, yeah. Carl Thomas is. A... Well, Dave Hollister. He was nineties, right? Nineties, two thousand. Nineties, two thousand. Either way, he still got snubbed. Um, Melanie Fiona. All right. I, I Kay remember. Michelle. You was making a case for Kay Michelle, yeah. I saw her live and just chills. She reminded me of like the Fantasia Keisha Cole like singing live. Mm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't imagine you seeing her dead. Ah, oh, boy, yeah, no. Yeah, As dude. opposed to on the record. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, uh, I, I think maybe Adele, but Adele's like late 2000s. Like she's more recent, so. Amy, Amy, Amy Winehouse was another one that uh, another name that came up too. But again, her body of work was short. She only had the one album, two albums, the two albums. So either, either way, hers was short. A couple of other notable uh, mentions too was Lauren Hill. But was she hip hop or singing? She was more like a rapper to me. And then you see, you wanted to put in Childish Gambino, but he's too recent and he's like in the Ja Rule, Fifty Cent. No, 50 he cent. is not. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, he rappers that sing. Rappers that sing, yeah. But he Drake's. sings good. He doesn't like it, no, no, no. Then how no, come he wasn't song? on your list? Because he's you too put, recent. You put fifty on your list. Uh, yeah. No, but you see, this is, this is the whole thing. We're not saying that they didn't. Who sang better? Just saying that the singer, the rapper that sings, did not make the list. So the Drake, the Ja Rule, the Fifty Cent. But Childish Gambino can put out a whole R and B album. But he, again, he's too. He more, came out like last year, though. No, but he did not. Even he's he, been out for a minute. He hasn't been out in the two thousands. Out two thousands. We're talking about two thousand to two thousand ten. Two thousand ten. He came out like two thousand ten. Yeah, he did. Well, he but wasn't on anybody's way, fucking and list. And he sang the hook on that song. Either way, two thousand and five. And he wasn't on anybody's list. He, he was, was on, on my list Your list But right. again But the singer The rapper that sings Did not make the list But he's not a rapper that sings He's a he, singer that raps He's a rapper that sings He's a rapper He's, he's a singer, He's a comedian He's an actor But he still did he's not make director. the list But see Based on his body of work He did not make the list Because who are you taking off the list If you're gonna put him on Why is everybody looking Looking over my shoulder At this list Like Chris Brown Bye I I know Chris Brown. Faith was, Evans. He can run it. Faith Over Evans. Donald Glover? Mm-hmm. I didn't even know Donald Glover could sing until last year when he put out... Well, too bad. Uh, so what's bad you call you? it? Again. The, Awaken My Love. Again, he's a rapper that sings. See, this And was, Chris Brown is a dancer that attempts to sing. Okay, all right. So this is the problem... 2002, pro- he was active. See, this is the problem that I As had. As an actor. This is the problem that I had and with what? James Brown. No. Right? With James Brown. James Brown, he's a funk artist. That had R and B songs. Michael Jackson is a pop artist that had R and B songs. Now the case with Michael Jackson is saying that he was popular, where any R and B song that he did was considered pop. Okay, Rick James was another funk artist that had R and B songs, but the rapper that sang did not make the list. But isn't funk a derivative of R&B? It is, but it is not R&B. It's listed as funk. If it was, like, I, I would give you Neo Soul. Jill Scott is Neo Soul. That's R&B. It's a derivative of R&B. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, he didn't make enough people's lists. He so didn't. enough people didn't consider him R&B to make the list. Yep, same thing with so, Ja Rule. Same, same thing, thing with, with 50 ja Rule. Cent. Same thing with 50 Cent. Same thing with Dr- singing ass Drake. Yeah. Like, uh, some people just did the same. Obviously, they're not the same. But either way, they st- the, the, the thing that is the same with them, they didn't make the list. No, it's not. It's, the fact is, is that it wasn't on enough people's list. It was on your list. Out of how many people? So, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Right? Are we still on this? What on the what? childish the two- Gambino? If you want to be, no, no, no. Because I was asking, like, so when people vote, where should their mindset be? Because yeah, we got Bobby Brown on the '90s list, and thinking about Bobby Brown today, it's like, mm. but when you think well, people about are going to be uh, Brown, people are going to choose that day that "Don't Be Cruel" came wait, out. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so on your walk, uh, you everybody's going to feed from a different place, right? Gotcha. So, like, our criteria for the list was. Voice, record sales, mm-hmm. impact on the game. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So, but when you vote, you're gonna vote for who you prefer. Prefer yeah. based on how you feel about it, you yeah. know. And we've given you the criteria that we used for the list, mm-hmm. so you can take that criteria: voice, record sales, impact on the game, songwriting ability, all of that, and then be like, well. I felt like this voice was better than this voice. Yeah. Or I felt like this guy had more hits than this guy. Or mm-hmm. you can just look at the fuck up on Billboard and make your decision that way. Yeah, at the end of the stats. day, it's going to be about who votes for who based on... Like, R. Kelly might not get votes just because of what he's doing right now. Yeah. yeah. But if you use the criteria that we presented and take his personal life out of it and, ev- and, and just look at the, the music. Stats. Just look at the stats and the R. Kelly's probably going to beat a lot. He should beat a lot of people on paper. He got like, he's basically like the soundtrack of the 90s. And for him to be ranked a 16th seed is, is a crime in itself. Based on music alone. It's like people, Based on music alone. Summer bunnies. Yeah. Uh, everybody has bad songs. Everybody <laughs> has bad songs. Everybody has bad songs. Like, but here's on. the thing. Like, it's like, if you look at like, even sports, right? P. Rose is not in the Hall of Fame still 
P. Rose is the greatest hitter to ever play baseball besides Ichiro mm -hmm. at this point. And he's not in the Hall of Fame because he bet on the game. His, his personal life. His affected, personal life. Affected right? his... People wanted to take O.J. Simpson out of the Hall of Fame because he might have killed a couple people. Allegedly. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly. <laughs> but when you look at his on-the-field attributes, like there's no denying he's like the third best rusher of all time. Yeah, see, right. if, you, if you scrub the name and you just look at the numbers, you could go based on just numbers alone and be like, yo, who's this person that has all these number one hit records, making all these record sales? If you just scrub the name and just look at numbers alone, you could do that. Or if you prefer to say like, you know what, it's not about numbers, it's how this person made me feel. Like some people might say, you know what? Sade made me feel better than Rick James Based on comparison, based on the matchup Right? Some people might say, you know what? Rick James is the soundtrack of my life Where Sade is totally foreign to me And that's how some people would vote So everybody would vote based on their personal preference It's not hard numbers Because somebody might say Whitney Houston shouldn't be ranked the number one over Michael Jackson Some people, again So it... It's a matter of debate and conversation, but also it's opening up for people to get back into certain catalogs. Start listening to Charlie Wilson. Start listening to James Ingram. If you want to make that People Bryson argument, you can listen to People Bryson, but he's not on the list, so he can't be a vote. So do what you want. Ken Griffey wasn't a unanimous Hall of Famer either. Three people decided they didn't want Ken Griffey in the Hall of Fame. So... Was he doing performance enhancing drugs though? No. 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 He had 660 home runs and he missed three seasons. Yeah. So, again, it's based on your personal preference. Right? So, like, you, some people might like Bill Withers over Patty LaBelle. How? I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know, but somebody would. No, perform. I can dig it. I get, I get all that. And so, she got the pies. Yeah. Some good ass pies, yo. Patty pies. Patty pies. Damn, you getting hungry? A little bit. So, that being the case, we might have to <laughs> wrap it up in a bit. So, yeah, we're going to post up. We're, we're going to post up the matchups. I'm going to put together the bracket, the official looking bracket. Yep. Um, in case people want to follow along online. And uh, I'll put the matchups up uh, within the day. We just got to give one day for to see who this playing game is. Yep. Between uh, Keisha Cole and, and uh, uh, Fantasia. And Fantasia. Versus Pink. <laughs> <laughs> go on. I, I'm sharing it everywhere. So uh, go on the site, uh, Saturday Morning Conversation page. Vote. You can go on my Facebook page. Yes. Uh, go on DJ Monkey Facebook page. Yes, go indeed. On, on Silent Producers Facebook page. Just vote. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like get your friends and. Get your friends. Uh, lobby behind who you want to win. You know. And, and vote early, vote often. And there's no right or wrong answer, really and truly. It's based on the vote. So if people vote Beyonce out, it's not on me. I don't nah. <laughs> it's not on me. That's for damn sure, because she gets my vote in that matchup, at least. <laughs> yeah, we are not responsible for how the voting turns out. Yeah, so again. We're going to cash unless it's only like four votes. And the one thing I would have to say, though, is be so. Because you might not agree with somebody's personal preference. Just because somebody doesn't like somebody doesn't make them stupid or uh, you're tone deaf or you don't know music. Like, that that's my part of the argument, is to be civil in the argument where you make your case and be like, okay, I respect where you're coming from, but this is my personal preference. I prefer Donald Jones over Justin Timberlake. That's me. You're stupid. No. Yeah, I bet I am, but, you know, I'm smart enough to... Have a to healthy debate, provide the facts... The stats. And then agree to disagree. That's it, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's they're something good to have a drink over. And, and they're have both that... amazing musicians that they got voices. Yeah. Vote early. Vote, vote often. often. And get uh, a friend. Get a friend to vote. Tell your friend to tell your friend to vote. Tell a friend. Yeah. To tell more friends to vote. Get your mom, your auntie. Get your mom, your auntie. To, you yeah. know. Kurt Franklin didn't make Vote as sure. often as you like. <laughs> you know, I don't think there's a cap on, on Facebook votes. I'm not really sure. No, I don't know. I think you can just click the button as many times as you want. Mm -hmm. um, however, if Minnie Ripperton gets 700 votes, we already know. Over Stevie Wonder. Over Stevie Wonder. Yeah. That, I don't even think you could do that in your in, on your own 
It, uh, yeah, you can't live with yourself picking her over Why Stevie. Why can't I? Her over Stevie? I like them both. You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah i'm gonna post up some uh pictures some little um videos, videos you can post your songs you can post your videos your songs you know, yeah if you want to if you want people to list. vote for a certain artist you know feel free to post up yeah. their music especially like if they're obscure like Ooh, or um, you or you mistake them for other motherfuckers like oh, people yeah, Bryson, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, we might just put some people Bryson songs up because everybody thinks he's James Ingram. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then James Ingram was like, "Can somebody just think that I'm me, just once?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. But yeah, Howie Hewitt still is one of those people that should have made the list in my eyes. But you know, Team Light Skin, it is what it is. Elder Bodge, Team Light Skin. No. Well, yeah. That being the case. Episode 26. Yes, the. In Los Bookis. Yeah, the Mount Rushmore of Arm B Selection Saturday, where everything has been uh, dished out. Word. We got thunder playing in the background and shit. Thunder? Yeah, I got a, a thunder thing. Oh. Uh, but anyway. Thunder, lightning. This <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, episode 26. Look for the brackets. Look for the look for the voting. Uh, make sure you vote early, often, often for your favorite Saturday morning conversation. Yep. Yep. <laughs>